Hello, Mr. Masalia, and welcome to a new little video. I recently installed Bazite on my old PC and basically turned it into my own little Steam console. This first started when Microsoft announced that they were going to end support for Windows 10 officially in October of this year. It is now the middle of November, so it did end unless you're in like the EU, you could extend it for like a year, but I didn't want to bother with that gonna be honest. I already knew my old PC was no longer gonna support Windows 11 because it has no TPM 2.0 module installed. Last year I was already planning to build my new PC in 2025 which I did. You can check out the video in the top right if you're interested and the whole Linux playlist as well. So I already knew basically my old PC was not gonna be my daily driver anymore but I also didn't want to sell it so I had to just come up with something to do for it and if it doesn't support Windows 11 officially then what else could I do with it? I basically gave myself a choice between like do I install Bazite on it or do I go with SteamOS even though it's technically not like fully released for all platforms and stuff. Or I was also hearing uh, pretty great things about Cache OS, which is an Arch-based distro. I wanted to really try out Bazite because it was supposed to be like similar to SteamOS, comes with Steam and uh, Lutris, for example, pre-installed. When downloading the ISO for Bazite, I could already like put in the options that I am using a NVIDIA card, specifically in that old PC, the 2060. Not a 2060 Super or anything, just a regular 2060. So my idea TLDR was basically to install Bazite on the thing and then use Steam in big picture mode and Steam would basically start on boot and then immediately go into big picture mode. So it's basically like using a Steam Deck because Steam Deck also has the boot up animation and goes into Steam OS or Steam Big Picture, like the UI for that. And because I didn't want to use a mouse and keyboard, I took my PS5 controller or one of the two that I have, just put the cable in the official one that I have, the USB-C, and plug it into my PC. And then I lean back in my beanbags and just play my Steam games with a controller in like a more casual setting for like single player games or party games, smaller indie games and stuff like that. Because obviously for playing the big games, like what, what am I currently playing that demands like performance? For example, like Icarus or stuff I obviously want to play with mouse and keyboard. I like Overwatch, for example. I obviously play on my main PC because that's not what that old Steam console which I'm calling it now, uh, is made for now. So let's get into the other big topic for this video because it fits really well with the timing of me putting together my old PC for this use case and playing my Steam games with a controller on it. A new Steam hardware announcement actually happened a week ago now where Valve announced free they can count to three. Yes, they, they actually did it. New hardware pieces. First off, the Steam controller, which I'm very interested in then a Steam machine and a new VR headset, the Steam Frame, which is not supposed to replace the Valve Index if you have one or were planning to get one. But I do think this looks very interesting considering today's VR market. So let's get into the Steam Controller. This thing will basically be the perfect match for my old PC because using a PS5 controller is nice and I did use the touchpad already to for example, go into desktop mode, like minimize Steam, and then launch the Prism Launcher on my desktop to play modded Minecraft Java Edition. Just slight vanilla mods and sodium, for example, for performance. And a controller support mod for Java Edition, which, to be honest, I feel like works in some aspects even better than the official Bedrock controller support if you're playing like on the PS5 edition, for example because they don't have a stupid emote wheel. <laughs> they have an actually useful like options wheel to select like third person, pick a block or swap hands and stuff like that, which obviously on PC you have more buttons, but oh my God, it, it does work really great. But yeah, back to the Steam controller. It also has two touch pads, which I was getting to with the PS5 controller touch pads. Uh, it, that's just a singular one and not really made for being like a mouse replacement. Uh, 
because this new Steam Controller, which I think they should have called Steam Controller 2, as to not confuse like when you're searching up the Steam Controllers, because if you search up Steam Controller, both can appear now or one will overtake the other in the future. So that's just, that sucks, but okay. But yeah, those two touchpads are gonna be really useful. For example, now I intentionally only installed games that were most or some of them at least semi-controller supported because I wanted this to be basically a console. But now with the Steam controller, I feel like I could actually install some PC only games at least, like like more casual games, obviously, because I want to lean back and just enjoy my free time after work. So also fully customizable through Steam input. I mean, most controllers are customizable to a certain extent with the Steam input. But I feel like th this is obviously going to be a controller made by Steam. The same guys that made the Steam input software in Steam. So it's going to be perfectly out of the box. But the two biggest aspects for why I will immediately get this controller to get to the fucking point. <laughs> the cable and magnetic charging poke they named it, uh, you get with the Steam controller, also functions as a wireless connection for your Steam controller. So my old PC doesn't support Bluetooth, and like I said, I'm currently using a PS5 controller with its official cable. The length is more than all right for the distance I'm sitting away from my uh, monitor in that case. But wireless is obviously a bit nicer, you know, and they advertise it as having 35 hours of battery life. So if every time I power down the PC, I put it on the magnetic charge thing again, I will basically never have to worry about battery life. So that's that's a plus, okay? That's a big plus. And I can already get used to the Steam Deck controls layout, I guess, because I would love to in the future, maybe next year, I don't know, uh, buy myself a Steam Deck because I think that would fit pretty well into my life and how I want to play games, because turning my old PC into a Steam console made casual gaming so much more enjoyable, which sounds weird. On my main PC, nowadays I feel like, okay, I have like an hour of free time or one and a half hour so where I can play games. Now I got to maximize that time. And oh my God, what do I play? Do I play this? Ah, oh, that takes a lot of time. I like to play those on weekends. Oh my God. And then at the end, I just watch YouTube for an hour and then go to bed. <laughs> but no, on that thing, I can just be like, yeah, let's play some Deep Rock Electric Survivor. Boot it up. Don't care. It doesn't have to be a like big performance heavy game because that's not what that thing is for. It's just play some party games, indie games, casual games, smaller games or medium games, because the PC is still powerful enough for medium-sized games, just not the top-tier games like Doom the Dark Ages. That's what this main PC is for. Let's move over to the Steam Machine. The Steam Machine, out of all of these three new announcements, it's like the least exciting thing for me, because I now got my old PC. The form factor is a consideration, though. For example, when hopefully at the end of next year, after my apprenticeship, is finished, I want to move into a new apartment or my first own apartment with my girlfriend. The form factor for like putting a steam machine, for example, into the living room next to the TV, that would be really good because that thing is basically the size of a GameCube. And compared to my old PC, a GameCube is really, really, really small. Obviously, that's a full desktop tower so the form factor is like the only thing i would take into consideration or the only positive for me obviously steam os runs on that thing Mwah. love more people hopefully adapting steam os because that's linux and linux percentage will go up linux recently just reached three percent on the steam hardware service linux is going up so that means hopefully support for linux goes up as well and the Steam Machine is not only running SteamOS in Steam Big Picture and stuff, you can play your games, but you can also go into a desktop mode. And that's just a huge thing. So it doesn't just mean that more, like for example, the Steam Deck also has obviously because it's running SteamOS a desktop mode, but it's not really made for like using it as a PC. It's nice for like mod installation or other launchers because Steam doesn't care if you install the Epic Games launcher, if you have games there, you can just do it. But on a Steam Machine, that's obviously six times, according to Valve, more powerful than the Steam Deck. 
you can actually use that thing as a desktop PC and they advertise it as you can use it as a desktop PC. I think they showed someone using Blender and Godot engine, I think, for game development. If they get the price right, Linux percentage actually goes up for not just handheld PCs, but also a fully fledged desktop. And we get more software officially supported for Linux. And then last but not least, let's get into the Steam frame, which I would say is besides the controller, the thing I am most excited about, depending on the price, obviously, but they already said that the Steam frame is going to be priced similar or a bit lower than the Valve Index. And the Valve Index uh, in Euro for shipping to Germany here is a uh, thousand and eighty ish euros. So I would imagine that thing is probably gonna be like 799, 899, like in that price range, like eight to 900 euro probably. I do like my inside out tracking. Uh, back in the day, I used a Rift S from Oculus, like Oculus Rift S. And I would really love to get back into VR because for example, Half of Alex, really good game, played that a lot. It does support mods through Steam Workshop. And I would love to see what people did with Half-Life Alex mods nowadays, as it's been a few years. I think Half-Life Alex came out in 2021. So it's been like four years now. And yeah, I would love to play Beat Saber as well again, modded Beat Saber. You can mod it easily on the Steam frame because the Steam frame is also running SteamOS. So you can go into a desktop mode and install things locally. But besides playing locally on a wireless VR headset, I am very interested to see how the eye tracking and like their new tech for only where your eyes are looking, it's getting fully rendered uh, with a from your main PC via a Wi-Fi 6 dongle that you get. I would love to see that because, for example, in the Linus Tech Tips video, he mentioned that it's actually really, really good. Like, I want to use that. I want to see that and I want to get back into VR. And the headset, just putting it on, like the form factor, how small it is and stuff. Oh my God, that would be such an amazing experience probably compared to my Rift S that I used to have. I did test the Quest 3 at a friend's house and it's nice, yes, it's nice. Uh, and that was the first time I did fully wireless VR. I don't like Meta, I'm sorry. Uh, that's th like the main reason I sold my VR back in the day because Meta back in the day said, yeah, you won't have to go make a Meta Facebook account, whatever, and you can keep your Oculus account. And then they forced me from Oculus into a Meta account and I said, no, fuck you. You agreed to stay away. I lied. That just rubbed me the wrong way, obviously, as I, as it should, when they promise something and then do something else if, like a year or two later. But yeah, that's why I'm very interested in like an open ecosystem SteamOS running Steam Frame. That's a sentence, damn. It's been a successful journey with turning my old PC into a little Steam console. I used to call it a Steam Machine, but then Valve made the announcement and I don't want to call it Steam Machine because that's not a Steam Machine. The Steam Machine is officially now made by Valve and Valve can count to free. Amazing, what a week. It's been a week and I'm still like excited for it. And I can't wait for the Steam Controller to release because that's going to be a day one purchase for me don't care <laughs> about the price well i do care but you you know what i mean i'm excited okay the steam machine like i said not that much but could be a consideration for the living room in the near future and the steam frame i would love to get back into vr but obviously i would have to uh, calculate my spendings uh, to see if this would fit into my uh, my budget for next year and next year's also gonna be really stressful anyways with i mentioned in the beginning my apprenticeship ending or finishing next year there's gonna be a lot of stress and then obviously moving into a new apartment and finding one first of all there's also gonna be a lot of stress so yeah and costs a lot of money so can't promise anything to myself but i would love to own a steam frame and yeah that's basically it so i can enjoy playing games more casually which sounds weird on my old PC in like a console-ish setting compared to my main PC where I want to play more performant games because, you know, I purchased the hardware, it's capable of performing that well. That's a breath of fresh air into my gaming life and playing games that I normally don't boot up and 
they just hog my Steam library and wither away, <laughs> kind of. One tiny little thing for the end of this video, if you made it this far, thank you so much. Uh, maybe like and subscribe, you know. I used to also have two hard drives, one two and one three terabyte hard drive in my old PC. I uninstalled those, I took them out and put them into a little dual dock or dual bay for hard drives and now I have easy access via my main PC. I just plug USB cable into the bay and then I can easily back up my files like finished videos, photos from like my old phone for example or if I need to clean some space on my phone I just back up my photos onto my backup drives so I not just repurposed my old PC and gave it a new life but also I have now easier access to my old hard drives for backups, which makes just everything more comfortable and easy to use. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, like I said, like, subscribe, maybe there's more content coming like Linux videos, gaming videos I will have to get to again. And there's obviously going to be more retro consoles like the N64, like I mentioned in the last SNES video is up next for that series. So yeah, enough yapping from me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Then I lean back in my bean bags. Back, 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 back. <laughs> then I lean back in my. <laughs> then I lean back in my bean bags.